Hello, here's Malban again, and I would like to talk about VD, Vectrex Integrated Development Environment, and I would like to talk about Vecchi again, the vector drawing tool integrated in VD. I already did a video about uh, Vecchi, but I think there are some more things to be shown. So, not all examples I will show you today will make much sense in the real meaning of the word, but they are meant as uh, a demonstration what one can do and I leave the rest of what can actually be done uh, to your imagination. So the first thing to do actually is start Vecchi. This is the vector editor. It looks probably a bit different uh, from the last video, but that's no concern. So first I would like to show off some possibilities about uh, images, images to vector. I don't know if I already showed you that, but uh, I will try this time. So there's a button under 2D tools, image to vector. If you press that, another window opens, and uh, in this window you can open an image, a, a normal image, PNG, or BMP, or whatever. I will do that now. I have somewhere some pictures here. This is a uh, actual Pac-Man images from a game I did some uh, decades ago and uh, I will use them just for demonstration purposes. So um, this is an original, more or less original uh, uh, bitmap. This is a black and white bitmap and this is an actual um, vector vectors that are generated from these images. I will switch off the endpoints. It looks a little bit better. So you have to play with these settings to get something uh, you really want. Uh, one thing that's not obvious right from the start, you can also only use parts of this image. If you go with the mouse over the image, you can select parts of the image and only these parts are taken and uh, used for the conversion. So I will use some part of the middle here for a test. And we use that. As you can see, these are quite a few Pac-Mans. And uh, for the demonstration I would like, I'll just take these as they are. You can, ah, perhaps I should talk about the window a little bit. Uh, there's a threshold slider here. With this you can uh, enter a threshold, what is taken as black and what is taken as white. It's uh, the color of the original image, so you can see, you can use a slider and the color changes. Uh, there's not much to change. These are despeckles, blur, uh, other thresholds you can uh, apply to this image, but uh, for this example it's not much useful. So this is a minimal vector length that should be taken. Uh, you just have to experiment what you like best. Uh, the further the sliders are to the left, the more vectors are uh, generated and the more original the Im image will look like. So I will transport these to Vecchi now, to Vecchi, and they will appear in our editor tool here. So with these many Pac-Mans, uh, there's not much you can really do on a Vectrex, but uh, this is not what I'm going to do. I will not take them all, I will just take one animation of these images and uh, will show you how I can do that. So I will scroll this window, this is actually new, to the Pac-Man I would like to use first. The scroll speed is actually determined by the grid width. If I change the grid width we can use larger steps, but anyway I will take one again. So now you can actually I see one Pac-Man. We will take this one at first and I will do that. I set uh, the mode to vector. With vectors I can use the internal buffer and this is what I will do. I will put this Pac-Man into an internal buffer. This is copy to buffer. I will delete the complete image. I will paste the buffer. I will center the vector list and put the current image into our animation. This is what I did here. Now I'll take back the steps. I have 
all other Pac-Mans again and I will take the next one. So I guess you can guess what I'm going to do. I will take a couple of Pac-Mans and build an animation of, from them. So here, copy again, new, paste, center, add to animation, go back again, take the next Pac-Man, Okay, I, I should probably take a larger grid, it would go a little bit faster. Um, take the next Pac-Man, copy it, new it, paste it, center it, add it. Now you can already see where this is going. Here is the preview window for animations. Uh, and if I switch on the animation, you can see Pac-Man. The Pac-Man itself, it's, as I said before, not a really great demo, but uh, I can show you another demo I did somewhere. Projects, last projects, somewhere there is. Not little demo, I did a little demo. Or is it little demo? Oh, I think it is. So, just start little demo. And there you can see where I used exactly that technique. This little runner over here, I did more or less exactly the same way. Uh, I added the uh, resulting vector lists a little bit and I probably will add the, uh, edit them a little bit more. But uh, I think this technique I just showed you can be used very easily to uh, get animations to the back tracks. Okay, close them. Okay, what I would like to show you now is how to use these buttons over here. As you can see now, I can select vectors, I can replace vectors and do nasty stuff to our poor pack guy and it doesn't concern the Pac-Man below here. Actually, if I click other Pac-Mans, the vector lists are always copied to the above list and uh, the animation itself it's not updated. Um, you can update manually, just we give it a small tail here and do an apply, then these changes I did above here are applied to the corresponding animation frame below here. So apply now you see it's got this little tail doesn't look very pretty but you get my meaning um, you can do that to the others too apply so now it looks well even weirder uh, you can actually use an auto apply so that all changes are directly put into the frame of the corresponding animation so if I use auto apply and do changes, let's say, to this guy here, you can see the animations are always directly changed. Sometimes that is useful, sometimes it is not so useful. I usually uh, leave auto apply off, it's a little safety net one always has. Uh, another thing uh, which is switched on always is edit on select as you can see if I, when I select which I did all the time uh, the uh, selected frame of the animation is always put directly into the editor frame if I deselect this this does not happen so you can select frames below here which are not put into the editor actually the only frame you cannot select is the one that already is in the editor I usually leave the edits on, but uh, you have to see that for yourself. You can change the animation, or the frame you are using by either clicking on the, uh, on the frames or by using these little arrows over here. So you can change them also. If you press shift and use these arrows, you can actually displace single frames within this animation. So this is the selected one. I press shift, you won't see that. 
and I can push or replace the frame within these uh, within the frames of the animation. Another button I did not explain yet is add view and what's the difference is between add view and add current. For this I switch this animation off. Now what's displayed here is exactly what's in the editor. So um, it's a different kind of view. And uh, over here is always this, uh, the, the vector list that is currently added to this displayed if the animation is not playing. Um, and actually you add this view to the animation list if you press add view. Well, this uh, sounds a little bit weird and it does not sound useful at once, but uh, this originated with the 3D settings that are possible. So I switch the tab over here to 3D settings and I can switch on display axis and uh, within this view panel now the axes are displayed. This is the x axis, the y axis and the z axis is actually uh, going towards us and uh, back from us. In order to view the 3D axis a little bit better you can actually change the angle of view on this view. Okay, uh, long talk, uh, nothing said really. Uh, you can use these two buttons. This is actually uh, a 3D coordinate system. This is a 2D coordinate system. These are default settings, but you can also change the angles uh, of the axis. This is what you can do here. You can change the, the angles of the axis. This is actually only how, how shall I say it? the viewport? Uh, uh, you change actually the the angle you as a viewer have on the uh, coordinate system displayed. So, but now you can see this. Oh well, uh, I'm hard pressed to, to say it's a Pac-Man. Uh, anyway, this figure over here is now displayed differently because we look at it at a different angle. So this is a different view. If you now press add view, you really add that what is viewed over here. So you see this is quite a bit different. If you go back and add current, then you see the difference. This is a view you actually added and this is a actual vectrex list you added. I know this sounds complicated and I have a hard time explaining it in English, but um, I hope you at least get my meaning. It does look a little bit better if you actually have a 3D object. The easiest way to uh, for the demo to create a 3D object is under the tab YZ. There you have an expand dimension. I uh, use the width of 10, I do uh, expand the dimensions and now you see this Pac-Man thingy over here is actually gotten 3D. It has got an additional dimension and now you can see really the 3D version so to say of, of, of the Pac-Man. And again you can add this view to the below vector list. This is the actual Pac-Man watch from the front and if you go to the 3D settings you can change your coordinate system or the view on your object and uh, here you can see if I switch them all to zero it looks like a 2D object but once you rotate it you see that it's a 3D object. Actually there's a difference. These are the axes and I rotate my own viewpoint on the object. This is what the axes actually do. And there's an object angel, uh, angle and within the, the space of that object one can also rotate the object as you can see here. 
the axes stay the same, but I can rotate the actual vector list. Um, for you as a user, that doesn't really make much difference. Uh, internally, it's calculated differently. You can also translocate an object. This merely is the same as dragging. Uh, but uh, mathematically, it's different. It's a transposition and matrices are used for that and so on but well you don't care and I actually support that so uh, I did say very much right now the button add view in short does transport that what you see over here to the current animation or scenario and uh, the button add current does transfer the current edited vector list to the scenario or animation that's the difference you might have seen uh, that as soon as I add few the few is uh, changed this will always happen since right now the few settings have angles and as soon as a view is added it is transported to the editor and the view to the edited object is again changed with these view settings so adding views will always change the object if the view is in any way different than the front view if you have a front view that's stable then the object also stays stable but there is still a translocation this is why the object wanders off now it's all the same wow that was difficult to explain wasn't it okay now I've talked much about animations I would like to switch to scenarios now for that, I will clear the current list and clear the vector list and let's look uh, what I've got on my hard drive here. If there's a vector list that I can use to show some other stuff. Well, I could use that. It doesn't look very pretty though. Um, oh, well. Isn't there somewhere? Oh well, let's take Malban. That's really great. So, uh, a scenario in general is also a collection of vector lists, but usually in an animation, the vector lists are displayed one at a time, and uh, over time, the frames are switched through the animation and only one at a, vector list at a time is displayed. A scenario I define uh, thus that there are more than one vector list and the vector lists are all displayed at the same time. As you can see here, these are actually one, two, three, four, four vector lists which are connected, which are polygons. So the M is one vector closed vector list, the A is one vector list, the L is one vector list and uh, the other letters are also one vector list. We can actually automatically build a scenario from that using separate paths as scenario entries. If we do that, we probably, I hope, will get an M, A, L and a BAN. So, let's see. No, I lied. Oh, well, the, the BAN actually includes the uh, and the A include enclosed vector lists themselves. So I was nearly right, but not completely. If we would play the current scenario as an animation, it would look pretty stupid. Here you see the different vector lists displayed as an animation, which doesn't make sense. But if I switch to scenario and display the scenario, then I, I have the complete vector list again. Anyway, the gist of a scenario is that a complete 
vector scenario is split it up into single vector lists which are continuous. So you can now now we can click below and see the different sections are displayed over there. Um, well, you can use these scenarios to generate specific exports. I think I showed you that before. We can do it just to, to show off something. Uh, play this scenario and you can see that it is displayed exactly as the original vector list. You can use now the different vector lists of this scenario to actually reuse these parts. You can for one thing reverse the scenario splitting that we did if you just join all these vectors again then you have the scenario again or um, you can use single instances of the single vector list and join them um, I mean by this that you can put together instances of vector lists from a collection. Okay, this sounds again complicated and maybe it is. Uh, I will show you and uh, you can decide for yourself if you find that useful. I probably will find it useful in the future. So we can add single vectors, vector lists from below here to the above. So you have to unselect edit and join and then you can join single instances and not the complete list. So this is the A, this is the L, um, then this will be the complete rest without the inner portions of the other lists. So you can see you can reuse single parts of this list. This can be useful if you, for example, want to edit sprites, if you want to call vector list collections sprites and join them for, uh, with uh, single parts of the sprites. I think Vecky Bird uh, did something like this. Michael Simmons, he uh, created his Vecky Birds from different parts. Uh, there were feet, there were wings, uh, body, and so on, and uh, he built his animations from different parts. So, if you want to use something like that, you can actually use Vecchi to provide vector lists to be reusable on its own. So, these were at least partially scenarios. Another thing I have not shown you, first I will reset everything and clear it and stop it. Um, importing of Wavefront object files. I searched the internet and they, I've downloaded some and I can show you how to import Wavefront object files. For that you go to, well, what else should it be to import? Wavefront object files. This is a gigantic populated tab which with one button load well ah, I think the tooltip is not right there <laughs> load wavefront object files you open a file selection box in on my hard drive under examples there are some object files they are very easy ones cube for example here you can see a cube well this is the front view you have to go to the 3D settings and switch on the angles again. Then you see this is actually a cube. Display angles. If we rotate it, you can see that is indeed a cube made of triangles. There are some others. Let's go to import again. Uh, export, import. 
is uh, oh I I do not want to pronounce it but I will load it there's such a thingy and you can rotate it again then you can see it and with these objects you can load the wavefront format has also included a definition of so-called faces faces are actually the well faces of these this uh, object and if Vecchi knows faces uh, it can use it to do a hidden line removal I haven't shown you before uh, and I will only do it now because well we're just here so here's a faces tab you can see all defined faces uh, for this vector list and uh, if you do an execute HLR hidden line removal a new vector list is created which only shows lines that are visible and uh, the view area that is taken is again the view below here so if I press that now um, you will an vector list will be created as a projection that looks like oh, I do it then you see it execute so now you see you only see the faces that are actually displayed I add current so we can easily uh, go back and if I go to this one here then edit on select might be needed then you can see these are is a vector list which consists only of the faces that uh, were visible when we displayed this vector list now we reset uh, to 2d now you can see it here that it's uh, actually a two-dimensional list you can also see it here under the yz axis that it's two-dimensional the original is three-dimensional so with hidden line removal you use faces to only to build a vector list which displays the current projection of the angles that were set in the 3D settings and the resulting vector list is a two-dimensional vector list projection. You can also combine this hidden line removal with rotations. For now I will leave that as an exercise to the reader and uh, I think I will finish here. So for now thank you and bye bye.